Well, the legendary producer, songwriter Desmond Child has got a brand new live album out. It's called Desmond Child Live. He's playing all of the biggest hits that he's ever written with all your favorite artists. Get it right now wherever music is sold. I mean, vinyl is so freaking big right now. It's like, I think it's outselling CDs and even like digital albums right now. I know we've been talking about doing a vinyl version of Desmond Child Live. Uh, and then uh, I just got told I had to drop four songs from the sh- from the from the album if I wanted to have a single, you know, two sided LP. And now oh, we're okay. like debating maybe what we need to do is do a, a double album. Yeah, you know, you, you got to go 180 gram double gatefold LP. Like go for the full works <laughs> if you're going to do it. You know. <laughs> um, and so you know the 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 thing is is that. This has gotten, you know, my appetite going, and I recently recorded a duet with Alice Cooper. Oh, nice. And um, I'm, that's going to be, on, you know, I'm the artist, and he's the featured guest, and I'm going to start dropping singles all year, you know, with all my different friends singing with me. Sweet. So eventually, like the old days, maybe I'll have enough singles added up to make a record, <laughs> an album. You know? Yeah, totally. And then, then you can do, your, you know, your two LP gatefold Vinyl Collector's Edition Desmond Child album. (laughs) (laughs) Talking about Alice Cooper, uh, Trash is one of my favorite records of all time. To me, that record is just timeless. Even as far as the production of the record, it just sounds so good. When you hear that snare drum on Poison, like the explosion cannonball snare, it just sounds so good to me still. So I just wanted to say thank you for making that record. It's one of my favorites of all time. It was one of my favorite to make. And um, I just love him so much. I mean... He taught me so much, you know, because he's a very Zen about everything. And, um, you know, he's happy, you know, when he's up, he's happy when he's down. He plays golf. He has a beautiful family and a gorgeous wife and, you know, and all of that. And Alice Cooper uh, is a character that Vincent Fournier has played yeah. most of his life. And so he, he knows the difference between Alice Cooper and Vincent. Vincent is like a very spiritual, loving person. And Alice, you know, cuts the heads off dolls on stage. Yes. But he, but he always gets punished in the end. So if he cuts a head off a doll, then he has, he's got to go into guillotine himself. Right. Completely. And get punished. And that, <laughs> when you were making that record, was the live element a big part of the songwriting process for that? Knowing like, damn, we need to go. Like, I'm going to be going out. Like Vince is sitting there on the couch in the studio and he's like, you know, I'm going to have to go out and, like you said, you know, eventually do the guillotine act and, you know, do all this stuff live. And I need to have these songs. Like, is there an intention going into the studio of creating anthemic anthems or are you just going in to write and create music? No, I mean, we, we set out to write a kind of a musical. You know, the songs tell a, a, a long arcing story. And so, you know, all of the people that contributed to the record, you know, Aerosmith, Bon Jovi, Joan Jett, um, you know, just Kip Winger. I mean, like all of the, all the friends jumped in and they co-wrote and they, they performed. It was a real, you know, barn raising, you know? And, um, you know, I, I think that when we went about it, we didn't think about anything other than to bring these stories to life in a very dramatic way. Mm-hmm. And that's how Poison was born. Even like songs like House of Fire, you know, I know which you collab with Joan Jett and they're like, how does a song like that come about? Like, are you just sitting there and you're air drumming like, House of Fire? Like, how, do, how does that happen? Yeah, I think that's how it was. <laughs> <laughs> I started the song with, with Joan and um, then, you know, it didn't turn out that, that that wasn't quite right for her image, you know? Right. So, um, you know, you know, I... I played it for Alice and he loved it. And so then she's, you know, jumped in and it's so good, you know? And, and, and in fact, um, I recently saw him performing in Nashville where I live and, um, he, they performed uh, bed of nails. Yeah. I went uh, with my buddy, Mitch LaFawn. We went to see Alice Cooper in Guilford, New Hampshire. And the fact that they pulled out, I didn't, I don't like looking at the set list before I go to a show. Like I like to be surprised. And when they kicked into it, I was like, I lost my freaking mind. I'm like, holy shit, I'm seeing Alice Cooper play Bed and Nails right now. <laughs> I know. So I think that, um, you know, he's just so totally unique. And the work that he did in the early years, you know, with Bob Ezrin and, 
you know, it's like, welcome to my nightmare. All of that is just all like completely genius. I mean, there would be no kiss without Alice Cooper. That's for sure. Well, completely. He well, invented, I'm he invented like heavy metal. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about kiss like just quickly, but go back to your comment about, you know, you were kind of writing almost like a rock opera with that record. Like a song like this maniacs in love with you, where you said that, you know, Vince knows the difference between Vincent and Alice is Vince is sitting there going like, oh, man, like, you know, Alice wouldn't sing this or, you know, there's nothing more that I can do. This maniac's in love with you. Like, is he sitting there trying to channel Alice like in the character and seeing like how he, oh, it's almost like it's an extension of him and how Alice would be living his life? I, I think it was just like that. I mean, it's like, oh, no, Alice can't sing that. You know, he he he's got to do do it this way. And, um, you know, the attitude. And so he gets into it, you know, while we're writing, he gets into the character and, you know, and stuff just pops out, you know, he's incredible with lyrics. (laughs) 